Jesus. Hallelujah. So thank you, everybody. God bless you. So if you're joining us for the first time, maybe you see this theme that says, you know, kingdom come. It is our prayer. It is our vision. You know, it is our mission as the church. We want to see, you know, a God's kingdom, you know, coming down on earth. It was a prayer of Jesus. He says, when you pray, you must pray and say, let your kingdom come. So we want to see the kingdom of God in our government. We want to see the kingdom of God in our communities. We want to see the kingdom of God in our churches. We want to see the kingdom of God in our families, in our marriages. So we have been pushing the issues of the kingdom and then this, this year. But as I close the topic you know, of May, before we enter into June, let me just wrap up the theme of May. If you remember, the theme of May, it was kingdom parenting. Kingdom parenting, we preach uh, 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 many sermons on this May, but allow me to close it, you know, under this subtopic this morning, parenting with the future in mind. Parenting with the future in mind. You know, recently I had a discussion with parents whose child has gone astray. This child has started taking drugs, no longer sleeping at home, and is living anyhow, this child. Now, as we sat with this family in their family room, let me tell you, we talked about these matters. We analyzed the situation. We cried together. We prayed together, knowing the future this child had, knowing the potential this child had. We find ourselves crying with this family. And I need to tell you, Basalan, that these are dedicated Christian parents who love the Lord. They are dedicated, they, they, they tithe, they worship God, Yet they found themselves in this painful situation. And they didn't understand why these things are happening. And this is what they said to us. Mfundisi, we have done our best to raise them. We took them to the best schools. Our children lack nothing. Whatever they want, we give them. We buy them good clothes, we give them everything they want. And this is the question that broke my heart. They begin to say, where did we go wrong? How did we miss this? You can tell now they want to take the blame and put it to, to themselves. And I strongly believe that this question, it never began with them. There are many of us, even this morning, even in the first service when we're praying with other parents, they said the very same thing. This couple came, first service, Utumfun is our only daughter. Only daughter. In Ghana, a miracle child. And he is, she is gone, taking drugs, you know, sleeping all over, we don't know. It's a question that we all ask. And I want to say to you, I strongly believe the parents of Samson, they also ask the question. We know that they, they, they both believed in God, raised Samson in a godly manner. But when Samson, time came for him to marry, he decided to marry a Philistine. To a point that even when the parent confronted him and said to him, hey, Samson, he just looked them straight in their eyes and he said, this is the one that I love. And you know the end of the story. But parents ask him as well. I'm wondering probably the parents, you know, of Solomon as well, probably they've asked him, the same question. We have raised you well, Solomon. You are, you are a prophetic child. The anointing of the Lord is upon you. You are full of wisdom. 
So why so many women? Why so many wives? Why are you bringing ungodly women in the kingdom of God? Many, I can give you a list and a list of, 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 of parents who actually had questions in the Bible about their children. What about the parents of Joseph? I mean, his own brothers, people who have been raised in a family that knew God. But now, but their own brother, they want to kill their own brother. They even sold him to slavery. They come back and lie to their fathers and say, look at the garment. Your boy is gone. Children who have been raised in the house of the Lord, now they are lying to their father. So the Bible is full of those stories. Listen to me, Mazalon. Parenting is the most challenging responsibility that was ever given to men. Parenting is not easy. How I wish parenting came with GPS. How I wish it came with GPS. If it came with one, it will probably say recalculating. If you have missed the point, GPS will tell you there is another route that you can take if you have missed one. But with parenting, listen to me, Basalon. When they are 17, they are 17. You cannot go back and try to treat them as if they are seven, as if they are six. This is where you need the grace of God. This is where you need the mercies of God. This is where you say, Father, I have played my part. I cannot be young. They cannot be young now. I've played my part, but now my biggest aunt in Parenting is not an easy thing. I am not here to condemn anybody, Basalwar. But I want to honor all the parents, all the parents who are here in Shalizanda, Zanda. I know most of you, 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 you are facing challenges. Things are not that good. But remember, we are talking about parenting with the future in mind. Pastor Matebula, what is parenting with the future in mind? Parenting with the future in mind is equipping your children with necessary life skills. Equipping your children with weapons for the future. You are giving them necessary skills. You are preparing them for the future. You are giving them weapons that they're going to use in the future to fight their own battle. So that even when you are no more, but they are able, you know, to handle life, they are able to deal with life in your absence, and then you have prepared them because they will never be with you forever. As much as I would love to keep them, I know we have built big houses and all that we want to be with them forever. But they can't be with us forever. Praise the name of Jesus. As I always say, the future is not something we enter into. It is something we create. Let's create a better future by parenting with the future in mind. Please, don't miss me here. Don't lose me here. Don't exclude yourself here. Maybe you might be sitting here and say, I don't have children of my own. But you know somebody who has children. Maybe in your family there is somebody who has children. And for the mere fact that you are getting this sermon today, God is allowing you to have this sermon so that you can use it, you know, for somebody else. You can use it for your neighbor, for someone who will come to you and say, I need some help. So parent, you know, with the future in mind. Now, obviously, sermons like this, you don't have an experience. You don't have an experience. My children... The first two girls now, they are no longer teenagers. I'm raising now teenagers, the twins. They've moved into that stage, praise the name. And then I also go around as well and ask people who have raised boys and say, you know, when they came to this age, how did you handle that? Are you covered? 
So you ask for some advices. How should I handle this? And then I got few advices from different people and also from the study as well. Somebody said, parenting begins with a purpose-driven marriage. And it begins with a purpose-driven marriage. He says, before you can speak about parenting, before you can speak about having babies, make sure you marry right. Marry someone with same values and beliefs. Purpose-driven marriages. That is where it begins. Before you even talk, talk about family, you talk about children, you must make sure that the person that you marry, young girl, the person that you marry, young man, it is a person who knows God. It's a person who has the same values. It is so painful to grow up in a house. You know, the mother, you know, unama velusatize, certain beliefs, and the father has some other beliefs. When the father says, come on, let us pray, and then the mother on the other says, says, let us consult the ancestors. What type of parenting is going to be that? Children, they grow up in this family. There's a lot of confusion. They don't know who to follow because the values in this house are not the same. Ubaba uyale, umama uyale. The values are not the same. Very important. Very important to you who are not married. Never compromise this. It's going to catch up with you for the rest of your life. You need to make sure that the values are the same. Fight for those values. If some of you now, you know, you, you are out of alignment for the sake of parenting and for the sake of building this marriage, make sure that you align yourself. Make sure that you align yourself. You are on the same alignment. You speak the same language. You know, over the years, we have tried our best. When one person is disciplining the children, all of us, we speak one language. You don't want the other one thinking to, to say, the and then this one, this is a cool one. You know, but the, 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 the gorilla in this house is the father, and the one who is actually good, it is the mother. Because all the time when the father says no, and the mother says don't do that, we end up fighting who's right, who's wrong, instead of speaking in the same language. And even if you want to correct me, you know, put me aside and say, Daddy, let us not talk to them like this. But we, 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 we come up with a plan behind the scenes. But when we go to them, we speak with lang one language. We speak with one language. So you parent with purpose driven marriage. How's your marriage? Sometimes we want our children to become good children. But our marriage is a mess. Look at the way you speak to your, to your spouse in front of them. How you handle yourself how you treat your husband, how you treat your wife, and you expect them to become great children, yet you are behaving like children in front of them. Parenting begins with a purpose-driven marriage. And then somebody said, the best security blanket a child can have is parents who respect each other. Parents who respect each other. You want to see your children respecting one another. It begins with you as parents. Cover them with that blanket of security where they can see that you respect each other. Number three, you will be a parent forever. There will be children only once. Enjoy their company today. I think this was the greatest advice. You will be a parent forever. There will be children only once. Enjoy their company today. Let me tell you, I remember the days and I still, I'm, I'm still longing for those days. When I come back home, my boys will come running. Papa, 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 what do you have? What do you have? Today, when the car comes in, <laughs> you can't laugh at this. This, this is painful. And I'll come in and I thought I'm, I'm going to, hey, Papa, no. When I come and say, hi, pops. <laughs> and, and that's it. No hugging, yana, no hugging, yana, no hugging, yana. Uh, uh, how was the day, pops? Uh, you sharp, sharp. And they'll tell you, I'm actually now forcing myself in them. There was a moment, I mean, they were running after me. 
But now they are running away from me. Now I'm forcing myself to them. I mean, there was a week where they were busy at school playing sports and then I said, no, 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 no. I said, go tell your teachers I also want time with you. Now I can say to them, come, let's go for lunch. I said, Pops, we are okay. You, you. <laughs> no. Don't do that to me. No, I still want, I still want you guys. Hallelujah. All that I'm trying to bring across here, Barcelona, is that, you know, you will be a parent forever. There will be children only once. While God is still giving you that opportunity, spend time with them. Spend time with them. I think it was Jesse Jackson who said, your children need your presence more than your present. Don't just give gifts. Give them your time. Be there when they want you. Be there. Be there when they want you. And then number four, number four, true parenting is not what you leave for your children, but what you leave in them. What you leave in them. Very important. That is true parenting. It's not about what you give them, but it is what you leave in the inside of them. That is true parenting. Are you with me? And then here is the last one. I'll leave the other one. Here is the last one. It says, raise your words. Not your voice. It is rain that grows flowers, not the thunder. Did you hear that one? It is rain that grows the flowers, not the thunder. How fella? We know the lightning is here. That here comes the thunder. Everybody must escape. But even when you try to listen, what are you saying? It does not make sense, but you are making a lot of thunder. You are not building them. Sit down with them. Speak to them. And be straight and confront the matters. Are you with me, child of God? Now, allow me to take, to use the scripture to revisit the story of Moses in the book of Exodus just to unpack some of the points that I could not unpack on that day when I was talking about this scripture, the book of Exodus. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you with me, child of God? The numbers are one. Now, look at Exodus chapter 2. Look at Exodus chapter 2. Let me take uh, two or three verses right there. And then it says, now a man of the tribe of, of, of Levi married a Levite woman. Can you see that? Can you see what I'm talking about? He was a Levi and he also married a Levite woman. Very, very, very important. And verse 2 says, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Because you're going to become pregnant with something, oh, partner, it's going to affect you. So the Bible says she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And when you look at that word son, it says home builders. So you don't want to give birth to something that's going to build wrong. So it begins with your marriage. So she gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, one translation says a special child, she hid him for three months. You know the story. And then Pharaoh's daughter, in verse 5, Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bath. And her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave because the mother of Moses took Moses and, then, and put him in a basket and put them into the river and Pharaoh's daughter and then saw this basket. In verse 6 it says she opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister, Miriam, who was actually standing at the distance, you know, the sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew boys, or of the Hebrew women, to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby, the, the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, 
take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. That is the most important thing. I want you to underline the word nurse him. Here is a scenario here. When Pharaoh's daughter decided to adopt this child, okay, she was supposed to raise this child so that she can become a mother. But here she is. She allows this girl to say, bring somebody to look after my child. And she says, take this baby and nurse him and I will pay you for raising him. This sounds like the generation of today. We have a better job. We are making a lot of money. We give birth to children. And we, we employ people. And we say to them, here is my child. I don't have time. I've got a career to chase. But raise my child. And I will pay you. Because we are so quick in paying. And replace our time by paying because we are good at that. And we trust somebody hoping that they will raise our children with our values. This is what we have done. Nankumbuzo, ufunda pumtana wako. Who are the people who are raising your children? I understand that your job is demanding. But did you check the people who are raising your children, their values and their beliefs? I said this morning, there's a family that I know employed in another country, a Muslim country. You know, they had a great career. But as they go to work, they leave their children behind. Are you with me? They leave their children behind. They leave their children with nannies that do not believe in God. People who are praying five times a day. And while they are praying, children are children. They do what they see. They started following these people and then in prayer. When mommy comes back home, they think everything it is okay. Until they came back to their country. Bringing them to church. Church never made sense to them because already something was done in their system. Now listen to what verse 10 says. Verse 10 says, when the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became a son. We don't know how old was he. And then Pharaoh's daughter, she named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Let me tell you, Pharaoh's daughter, Whatever you do at that stage, you are too late. Because already they have tempered with the software. You see, a human being has a, 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 a software and the, and the hardware. So most of the time, they temper with the software. But what this woman did, she made sure that she puts a hard drive in the inside with the values of the kingdom. I strongly believe that Jacobet, while, while she, she was nursing this child, she knew that biologically he's my son, but the environment does not allow me to have him anymore. But as long as I have him right now, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to put the hard drive in the inside. I can see this woman carrying this baby, nursing this baby, you know, saying, When he was crying, Moses, she will say, When are you are the kingdom builder, when are you are the deliverer, when are you are God's servant, God is going to use you. She was prophesying over the baby. She was saying a lot of things over the baby. After many years, she took the baby, gave it to her, and said, here's the baby. Listen to what the Muslims believe in, Barcelona. This is the slogan of the Muslims. The Muslim says, 
give us a kid till she's seven and we'll have her for life. But give us a child just for seven years. And if we can have her for seven years, we can have it for life. You might think you are owning them. But as long as they are with us just for seven, we can hand them over to you. But already, we have done the damage. You cannot control them. Sooner or later, they will show the true colors. Because we have tempered with the hard drive. We have tempered with the software. Here is Moses. He's moving up and down in the kingdom. He's a prince. Hallelujah. He's wearing like an Egyptian. He is speaking like an Egyptian, but, but the software and the hard drive in the inside, it is totally different. The mother is not there. He does not even have an idea, oh, that is my mother. But the, the, the hard drive in the inside, it's a different hard drive. The Bible says one day, one day, he saw a Hebrew boy and another Hebrew boy fighting together. The hard drive in the inside. And then he made them to go to them. And he said to them, don't do this. Don't do this. This one is a Hebrew and also this one is a Hebrew. You don't need to fight together. You you are brothers in the same kingdom and one day one day while he was moving around he saw he saw an egyptian fighting a hebrew boy and you know what he did he took a side he took a side of the hebrew boys and they fought the egyptian because they had drive when you read in the book of hebrews chapter 11 verse 24 it says when Moses became of age, he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Sega says Angel Ziga Sega Ziga daughter Naga Pharaoh, but he says I don't belong here. He said I would rather suffer with the people of God. He rejected the whole thing. Rejected the whole thing because the mother made some work. Let me ask you this question. As a proud parent, proud as you are, first year of your child going to school, I see people taking photos with a uniform with their children, buying a new, new uniform. You're taking them to school. You hand them over to a teacher first year in this school here is my question what is it that you have done did you put a hard drive in them while you hand them over to these teachers these teachers do they believe in god what is their belief system what are you exposing your child into what are they saying about god fine they come back they come back do you have time to ask them? You know what is happening now in South Africa? Our children go to schools in the very same class. They've got children. They, they've become sangomas. And that is where our children are. Maybe let me also come to you who's saying he's in a best school, multiracial school, because that is where all of us, we are taking them. We want a best school for them. But here is my question. What are they teaching them? What values are they giving them? What I've picked up with my children after primary going to high school I've realized that they've messed up with their software. They begin to think like English people. They, they, they think like English people. And listen, every language that they used to teach your children, it comes with a culture. 
That is why in Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, the first thing Nebuchadnezzar wanted to do, he changed their names. He changed their names and he said, you must also teach them the literature as a Babylon, because he knew that the literature as a Babylon, it comes with the culture. And I'm very skeptical with an English culture. Because it's the same culture that says, black folks are inferior. We are superior. And sooner or later, the thinking of our children they don't want to even embrace what is happening at home. They don't want to embrace what is happening in the township. They don't want to identify themselves with what is happening in the township. They will come to this church, we groom them, we pray for them. The moment they become professionals, they earn a good salary. Here comes the hard drive. They say bye-bye. I'd rather go to that church in Sante. I'd rather go to that church in Pretoria. A white church is better than this one. Because now they feel, here, I am more accepted and more received. Well, I understand there are some dynamics in other churches. There's no professionalism. We've tried everything. We said, Hill Song, let's accommodate you. Best music time, we said, we can give you a service of an hour and do everything. But you still have those who are saying, I cannot be led by a black man. You know what happened? It tempered with a hard drive. So our children, they don't see us relevant anymore because they've tempered with a hard drive. Now when I learn to learn how you, we show what in the family name. I'm not born a being a hard seller. Into what? We have begun to know This is a serious battle. It's a serious battle. So I needed to give you four points. I needed to give you four points. And here are the four points quickly. I'm not going to spend time on it. Number one, if we are going to parent with the future in mind, see your children as God sees them. The Bible says, when this boy was born, Jacobet, when she saw that he was a fine child, a special child, she hid him for three months. Every parent, you need to see your children and see them as special. See them as a gift from God. See them as unique. See them as God sees them. Don't see them as failure. Don't see them as a mistake. I will not mistake. Maybe you did not plan them, but they have learned it. My parents did not plan me. You know my story, but they wanted to abort me. But later on, my mother saw me as God saw me. And she said, Uzoba Umatebu, Uzoba Uspiwe, Uzoba Christopher. She prophesied over my life. Here am I, I'm standing today. Here am I, I'm standing today. So see them as God sees them. Number two, empower them to be who God has made them to be. Empower them to be who God has made them to be. Analyze them. Sit down with them. Don't force them to be what you want them to be. I'm praying that one pastor will come from them. But if there's no pastor, if God does not want any one of them to be a pastor, that's fine. We are not in the business here of promoting our own children, you know, who are not even capable I have seen pastors, but I am a daba daba and say na baba beka pulpit in. In the name of the pastor, good in na nufunum dana mazo shumael, shumael a pele. We are born aguna chesola. Utegas kunda shatatuawe. 
If they don't have God, they must forget about the things of God. Because whoever's going to take over here, they must make sure they know God. They've got a personal encounter with God. You know, the church staff, Bazalwan, is not a business staff. You can train your children to do business, but church is not about training your children. They must have a personal call of God. They must have an experience. They must have an encounter with Jesus. If they don't have that encounter, they must forget. Spiritual sons will take over, and I don't have a problem with that. You know me by now. I'm not here to build a, a palace or my own kingdom, but empower them to be who God has made them to be. The word to nurse simply means to nourish at a breast. Nourish. While you have an opportunity, nourish them. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Can I prophesy? Can I declare some things? Those of you, the, some of you are here and your children have gone astray. If there's a hard drive that you have deposited, I want you to remain in hope. Keep on trusting God. Keep on trusting in God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Wherever they are, wherever they are, wherever they are, may they remember where they are coming from. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Activate that hard drive. Activate those teaching. Activate the things that have been taught. Activate mighty Faribo Shika Talababa. Baba Vusum Lilo. Lom Lilo Fugagumose. Umamang Eko. In the name of Jesus, we say to our children, we have gone astray. May they remember where they are coming from. In the name of Jesus. May they remember. May they remember where they are coming from. Keep on praying, women of God. Keep on praying, men of God. Don't give up on them. 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 Every night, every day, keep on calling their name. Keep, as long as the body and the souls are still together, there is still hope. There is still hope. There is still hope. And I declare, may the good God surprise you. May the good God favor you in the name of Jesus. So I said, number one, see them as God sees them. Empower them to be who God has made them to be. Number three, tell them who they are before the world does. Tell them who they are before the world does. If you don't tell them who they are, the world will tell them and they will give him a wrong name. Uti is Moses because I drove him from the water. Really? So therefore it's Moses. And God on the other side says, I see a deliverer. I see a deliverer. Not just somebody who has been taken out of water. Tell them who they are before the world does. Number four, release them as a sharpened arrow to the world. That's what the Bible says. It says children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. And your role is to sharpen them is to straighten them, is to release them, is to release them. You know, and if you release them, they must achieve greater things than you. Because if we are, you, are, you are holding an arrow and the bow, Bazalon, you are standing here, but you are releasing them, you are releasing them, let them go far, let them reach places that you have never reached. Bazalon. Now, there's a rugby that is coming in August. It is the Springbok and the All Blacks. They're very good in rugby, these ones. Very good. Now, they want to go and watch that game. Man, it didn't pay Hey! His salary, Muslim. His salary. But you know what I've done? I didn't tell them. Here is my commitment, boys. I want to take them to that rugby. To that, to that day. I'm going to take them. Let them go see what is happening 
on that day. I will pay that money. They're going to watch there, not on television this time. I want them to have an experience because I want them to achieve things that I did not achieve. And I'm prepared to take it from my pocket and make sure that they become a blessing. A father releases them to other places in the name of Jesus. Parenting with future in mind. Do you remember the story of Jonathan Edwards? Remember the story of Jonathan Edwards? Maybe you don't know. This is a man who was born in 1703 and he died in 1758. Oh, Jonathan Edward. Here's the picture of Jonathan Edward. Play. Now, the story says, after he died, Jonathan Edward had 10 children. He was blessed with 10 children. And he was a dedicated man who loved God. And people, they wanted to see after he was no more the impact that he has made. And by the year 1900, his children and descendants included the following. 13 college presidents, 63 professors, 100 lawyers, including one dean of the outstanding law school, 30 judges, 3 U.S. senators, 1 U.S.A. deputy president, 66 physicians, 135 editors, 1 publisher, over 100 overseas missionaries, over 100 philanthropists. Here is the crack of the matter here. His descendants cost government not a single cent. This man. Because while he was parenting, he was thinking about the future. Tina, Abantuan Abitu, they are costing the government because we don't have future in mind. We keep on making babies, help, hoping that the government will raise them. Lord, have mercy on us. May you go out there, parent them in a godly manner. Those of you who are joining us online, God bless you. We love you. In Musa, Ibenani. In Jesus' name, amen. Cut them. Bye. Bye-bye.